This is gonna be an adventure. I've never done a river trip where I have to run rapids, and I've never done a river trip solo. Very shallow here. <laughs> Okay, learned something there. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo! Talk about a rush! Woo! Yeah! Oh man! Woo! Oh, I'm so glad I did that. Hey guys, how are you? Joe here. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you understand that I go on these long extended trips in the summertime, and when I go away, self-care is kind of at the bottom of the barrel, right? Needless to say, when I come back, the carpet matches the drapes. So that's why I was super happy when Manscaped reached out and wanted to sponsor a video. Check it out. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. Let's get into it. Super excited to be one of the first to try out the new Lawnmower 4.0 waterproof cordless trimmer. So it's got these three advanced ceramic blades with skin safe technology to help reduce nicks and cuts and they can also be easily replaced. One of my favorite features is that it's cordless and waterproof so you can trim right in the shower. And with the new wireless charging system you can get up to 90 minutes of use on a full charge. When the trimmer is off, just click the on button three times fast and the LED indicator will show you it's locked and safe for travel. You can even customize your preferred hair length with four trimmer guard options. Now check out this two-tone black finish that features a hot foil stamp Manscaped logo. Show off that mower loud and proud. So I'm pretty impressed with the new lawnmower 4.0. I've been waiting for something like this for a while. Happy to have it, happy to use it, and happy to have Manscaped as a sponsor. Manscaped is hooking you guys up. You can get 20% off plus free shipping when you use the promo code Robinette at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free international shipping when you use the coupon code Robinette at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Good morning. It's about 20 after 7. I slept really well. It uh, doesn't look too sunny out, but I haven't opened up my fly. I, flew, I shot my fly halfway through the night. Stayed nice and warm, but I'm really hungry. And I'm going to get up. Headed down there today. It must have got cold last night. Check out the sand is frozen. Can't even make a footprint in the sand. Next to the wolfies. Oatmeal soup. Mm. I think it'll be all right. Alright, we got some cranberries, oatmeal, and I got some bacon jerky as well. A little more protein. Mm. 
Another day on the river. It's supposed to get up pretty warm today, probably around 50 or 60 degrees. It is cold though, right now. I'm gonna eat this up, enjoy my fire, a nice scene. It's flowing water right in front of me. Sun's coming in on the other side. Actually, where I am is the darkest spot. There's some sun on that side, some sun down there. So we'll uh, we'll break down camp soon. Get in the water and uh, search for some sunlight. There's rapids right there. Rapids. Probably nothing worse than I've already come across. But at some point today, there's going to be the biggest rapid on this trip, and I don't know if I'll portage it. Or who goes a Morganser? Portage it or uh, run it. We'll see. Hopefully, run it. Okay. In the boat and pretty cold. My toes are numb. So we gotta get out into the sun. Hopefully it'll warm our bones. Good campsite. Really good campsite. Awesome beach. Flat enough lay. For my tent. That's all I needed. Really happy with it and excited to see what this day brings as well. Sun, oh glorious sun! Where's the sun? Sun, where the heck you go? Hiding behind them trees. This little canoeist is asking you, please come out so you can warm my bones. Better pay attention. Yeah, that was the best one. I uh, just threw the GoPro up at the last second. Sorry, it moved around. My bad. All right, warming up. I just hopped out of the just hopped out of the canoe to walk around a little bit to try and warm my feet up. Uh, the sun is warming the rest of my body up, and uh, I'm sure my feet will come along shortly. Just ran a bunch more rapids. I'm getting the hang of it, but again, oh, and I see some more up there. But again, I sound like a broken record. I know that these are not anything, but uh, I cannot control that. <laughs> I didn't know, but that's all right. It's good for me to learn on. And there, there's more up there. I'm gonna leave the big camera out this time. Hopefully, uh, everything stays copacetic. So yesterday, when I said this river would not be paddleable in the summer, that was wrong. It was just some parts of it you'd have to do a lot of portaging or wading, pulling, lining. Um, but most of it, after the first like half of the day, not even, maybe first two out of three hours yesterday, then it got better. Because this is a legit river, like it's shallow, but still probably 10 feet where I am right now. So it's definitely paddleable in the summertime. And maybe more fish will be active. I haven't, I've been trying to fish here and there, haven't really got too many bites other than that. A little pike yesterday, but uh, anyway, beautiful area. 
beautiful area. Great for a beginner like me to be here and learn my learn the ropes, especially alone. Beauty morning, lots more of a flow today. If they want to make some distance today. Trying to hit some highlights. See how this white water goes up ahead with this camera. <laughs> Tippy, keep that uh, a tripod on there. A big camera. Wow, look at the scenery in front. Holy smokes, look at the cliff. Nice, very nice. You didn't see that before now. Just grabbed this gun. That's a bonus. Talk about a view from my canoe. Not too shabby. Nice view. Rapids right there. This is so pretty. Such beautiful terrain out here. There looks to be quite an amount of ice in the forest still. Let's go check it out. Oh man. That's kind of cool. This is pretty wild. <laughs> I'm glad I pulled over. Big hills, awesome, awesome scenery over here. Still going hard. I'm just hitting these, this moving water now, left and right, no problem much more confident.
I think there might be a carcass over here. Uh, I turned the bend and a bald eagle flew up and then about six turkey vultures flew up and they were all on this hump of something over here. They, st they started out on this hump of something over here. It looks to be a dead moose. We'll go to go check it out. Yeah, definitely a dead moose. The butterflies are into it too. He just nose right off. I'm downwind. Okay, we're out of here. I wonder what that poor old guy succumbed to. Maybe falling through the ice. Could have been old, just old age too, I suppose. It's pretty big and old, old looking. But who knows? Um, sure, it wasn't wolves because it was still intact. Anyway, such is life, and the end of life. <laughs> crazy it's cool it's cool about a river you never know what's gonna be around the next gun honestly I have no clue like uh, bear dead moose I saw something else too I could swear it was a bear but it was too far away to see could have been an otter I guess but uh, tons of birds crazy scenery love this love this kind of trip I have to stop for lunch soon. It's afternoon. It's after 12, 12.30 or 1 now. And there's the bald eagle. I spooked away from the, the uh, moose. directions in the river we're heading out I imagine heading west because the wind is crazy I've been paddling against it for the past couple hours twice since I talked to you last so some rapids here and there but mostly flat stretches wide stretches of little swips and lots and lots of wind so I'm hoping to get up to uh, some smaller sections soon or hope the river turns soon as of now, this is a workout again. The current is stronger here though, so that's good than yesterday, but it's all against the wind all the time, as you can tell from this whole situation. So I'm debating on running this. This will be by far the craziest thing I've done on this trip. It's really close to the wall, to the rock wall. I'm going to hike out there and get a better look. Okay, I'm going to attempt it. i got all my stuff here. I have dry clothes. Uh, there's firewood around. There's driftwood everywhere. All my stuff's here. My adrenaline's through the roof right now, but we're going to do it. I wouldn't do it if I didn't think I had a good chance of pulling it off. And it, I have my in-reach zipped in my pocket, life jacket on. It'll be okay either way. Like, don't get me wrong, it's cold. The water's gonna be freezing, but it's worth it. All right, wish me luck. Here I go. I'm so glad I did that. Oh, I'm so glad I did that. Well worth the risk for me. That was awesome. Super stoked, super, super stoked on that. Okay, I gotta get my gear. Whoa, buddy. That was awesome. One of my funner times in my canoe. So 
shallow. Tons of snow on the shore over here. a lot of snow. <laughs> Is that a tree sticking out of it? Crazy. has happened since we saw each other last. We stopped and had supper. I guess that's all that happened. <laughs> well, I stopped and had supper and I continue, I'm going to continue on because uh, I can't find any good spots at all to camp and I uh, yeah I'm just going to go until I can't go anymore. I'll um, pull over soon enough. I probably got an hour before dark. All I have to do is set up and go to bed. Um, depending on when, when I get there, I might have a little fire, but I've already eaten, like I've said. And all I have to do is go to sleep. I don't know what that is up there. That looks to me like a big opening on a, on a hill, like a point. We're definitely gonna go see if we can camp there. Looks slick. It looks very inviting, from here at least. So far, it's the farthest thing from flat. Maybe, maybe over here. here. It's relatively flat. There's not much to stake out to, but it's okay. Relatively clear of overhead trees. Some firewood right here. This is the best spot I've seen so far. I'm up nice and high. Okay. A little beaver dam or beaver lodge right there, I mean. I'm running out of time anyway, so this is this is it regardless, but I don't I don't hate it. It's pretty nice. Nice view of the river.
<laughs> and I hear a noise up here. Hello? Occupado. Just for tonight, please. Thank you. I check it out. I didn't even notice this. Right out at the very top of the peak of the uh, little hill here, there's a fire pit. So someone has used this at least for a spot before. Stop. All right, we're going flyless tonight. Now to get some firewood. There's all this maple like this. There's little pieces in between these clumps. I'll collect a lot of that. Looks like this might have been a fire pit at some point. Obviously not in forever. There's weeds growing all in it and everything, but I think if I can use this, I can sit right here on the ledge and have my fire right here, and that will be good with me. Yeah, there's all this is all burnt stuff in here for sure. This was a fire pit at some point. Yeah, by who or when, I'd love to know. Wind keeps picking up, died down for a little bit. That is the moon. <laughs> that is crazy. You'd think it was the sun. Wow. And with that, I'm going to go to bed. I chickened out and put the fly on my tent. Judge me. Judge you. Judge me if you must. Alright, guys. Just gonna head to hay. Could probably get up tomorrow pretty early. But who knows? If I sleep in, I sleep in. I'll see you guys in the morning. I'm gonna sleep well.
Getting dicey. Getting dicey. Okay, these gloves are not meant for hot stuff. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. It's right next to a beaver lodge here, so I'm just gonna let it boil a little bit, one or two minutes longer than normal. I'll go grab some more wood and throw it on here while I'm throw a fire while I'm eating. I'm gonna get up and get out of here. I think I'm ahead of progress now. So uh, looking at the stuff last night looks that way. So uh, I'll paddle for a few hours, see where I am and then probably give my wife a call to come get me because it's about I don't know, a good haul for her to get here, a couple hours at least. This guy has changed dramatically from this morning. I'm about to get in the boat and paddle on. Pretty good morning, not as cold as yesterday, that's for sure. What a different vibe than yesterday, man. It's like ominous almost. It is supposed to rain today. I thought I had about a half a day till it started, but who knows. So I think I have about an hour or two left of the river. And then I have about the same distance, it looks like, on the map, it looks like I have the same distance ending on a big lake. So an hour or two paddle on the river, and then an hour or two paddle on the big lake. And once I get to the lake, I'll call Will, or I'll message her on uh, InReach, which has proven to be pretty useful. I, uh, this is the first time I've used one, or I've had one myself at least. I bought it in preparation for these big trips this year. Um, it's helpful because I can tell her like I'm gonna be at this exit we, we, we mapped out a couple different uh, takeout points on the way up on the drive up she dropped me off so like for instance I'm take, getting out a takeout point one along the drive up there's one two three four and I'm going to one which is the farthest paddle for me and the shortest distance drive for her but if I would have dunked in that Rapid there yesterday, the, the strongest one I did. Um, and if I couldn't fix myself up, then there's the SOS button too, and I definitely wouldn't want to hit that, but it is there in case I need it. But uh, yeah, a little peace of mind. Better than the spot, because the spot you can't text out and say like, I'm at camp, or like, uh, you can actually check the weather on this inReach thing too. So I don't like the fact that you have contact because like I don't want to be told if something went wrong when went wrong at home I can't get there to fix it but the good thing is you can't get texted you can't get text you can't get texts until you text out like they can only reply so anyways I like it pretty useful and this is pretty freaking scenic right here Can you see this cliff like that is a an enormous sheer rock, man. I, it's hard to get the scale. It's got to be 200 feet up easy. This is gorgeous, man. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Just gorgeous here, man. Nuts. 
It's dead calm too. There's not a breeze or a sound. Wow, this place is magic. No joke. And just like that, the clouds disappear, sun comes out, and it's a beautiful day. It's crazy how the topography has changed on this lake. I started north, and I paddled south, and north was way less rocky and serene as south. And mind you, south is still pretty damn north, but uh, comparative to each other, up there was way more flat and grassy and like sandy. Down here, you can see all just the magnificent cliffs and awesome contours really really cool really spectacular time to be out too with the snow on the banks and no bugs getting pretty nice every day the first day was darn chilly but other than that I've been pretty good actually speaking of that I can release the beast I just sent the inReach to my wife to leave at 9 and it's 8.30 now. So if she's there by noon, I imagine I'll be there by noon too and neither of us will have to wait too long. Either way, it's all good. I'm just waiting on the reply. I have not got the reply text. But uh, I imagine I'll be coming along any time now. Q in reach. Q in reach. No reply, but hmm, we'll see. There's been tons of beaver lodges along this trip. No beaver dams. Moose, bear, tons of birds. Very little fish. I believe it's just too cold for the fish, I could be wrong. Oh, what does this say? Nope, nothing. Hmm. What's the heck? Anyway, good trip. Really happy I got this one in. It's a beginner trip for the rest of the season. So, very looking, looking very much I'm looking very forward to this canoeing season. I've got a single blade canoe coming instead of paddling with a double blade. And it's Expedition Kevlar, so it'll be a little bit better on the rocks. And uh, I can maneuver it a little bit more, well, a lot more with a single blade from the middle than I can with these. I will still bring the double blade for situations where it's too windy or I have to cross a big expanse or something, but I want to learn how to paddle with a single blade proficiently. It's just something I want to do this year. That along with more white water, because that was probably the biggest adrenaline dump that I have had man, since four wheeling, I guess, since I started four wheeling, or even since I did the white water, the stuff on the American River with, with Kyle, the white water stuff on the inflatable duckies. I kind of alluded to it earlier in the trip, but go watch that video, I'll link it. It was a harrowing time. Me and Kyle always seem to find ourselves in some kind of adventure. Missed that dude. Hopefully, uh, 
the world fixes itself and we can go on a canoe trip sooner rather than later. The river's widening up. I feel like I'm getting close to the lake now. Well, I grossly misjudged the time it would take me to get the distance I need to get. The whole trip I've been on the river, and most of it had a current, and I, judging off yesterday, I cruised. I did most of this river yesterday. Uh, now, as you can see, it's wide open. It's, uh, it's basically a lake, and it is taking me so much longer. It's probably slowed me down three times as slow. Uh, so my poor wife is gonna be at the takeout probably a couple hours before me. Um, I imagine she's already there. It's uh, 11.30 now. I still think I have. If I'm there by 12.30 or one, I'll be doing good. So, uh, it's a long, arduous process now of just paddling out. Uh, there's not much topography anymore. It's changed mostly into hardwood on one side and birch on the other and uh, just open and windy. Not as windy as the days before, but it's, uh, it's a long, long paddle out. I didn't expect it. I thought I was just gonna cruise out like I did the past couple days, but that was silly thinking. Anyway, I got my work cut out for me and I have no food left, zero food at all. Like, uh, I ate my last pepperoni and handful of cranberries an hour ago. Paddle, paddle, paddle! It's now one o'clock. What was just a short chunk to get out of here, it turned into a half a day of hard paddling. So I messaged my wife again on the inReach saying that I was going to be a couple hours longer. Uh, I told them to go back town somewhere and get some lunch or something, so hopefully that's what they did. I didn't get a reply, but um, anyways, I should be out of here in about another hour, I think. I'm starting to see civilization, so it's a lot. I'm done. I'm hungry. I haven't had any food since this morning. It's a good lesson to not underestimate things be prepared. I had room in the canoe and I had room in the backpack and everything for extra food and I should have brought it. I brought two pairs of boots on this trip. I brought two sleeping bags which I needed. Plenty of clothes. But food I was lacking and I really thought I was going to get a fish or two to eat. I really did. Um, that little tiny baby pike I caught at the beginning was nothing. And then nothing since. Today I've been trolling the whole way bunch of the trip was too short, too, too shallow to fish at all, and I was moving quite quickly, so it wasn't a really fishing oriented trip, but I was expecting to get in the bottom of some rapids and fish and you know, catch stuff, but even the uh, the big rapid I ran yesterday and fished in the bottom, we got nothing, not even a hint of a fish, no bites. So, there's no black flies out, there's no buds on the trees really, you know what I mean, it's not really time for fishing yet, but I figured I would have shot, I thought I would catch something. Anyways, more food, more food for little Joe. I don't have a lot of reserves, really. Like I'm not joking around. Like it's, I burn up what I have when I'm when I'm doing this stuff, and then I need to eat to replenish it. And uh, when I don't have food, it's kind of taxing on the body. I get a little hangry. <laughs> but uh, I asked my wife to bring me a sandwich and some fruit. So hopefully, uh, I'll be there soon enough to get that. And until then, water. Just to keep it hydrated, you know? I made it. I made it and they're not here. So hopefully they'll be here soon and hopefully they've got their food. I'll get with you in a couple of minutes. I'm beat. Well, this is where I came from. A big old river and in a big old lake. And now I'm up here on this hill. 
It's a whole fire ring. Got my gear all ready, all ready to be loaded onto the car. As always, really good gear. Neck bag, swift pack boat. This was my biggest portage of the trip. Carrying my gear from there up here. Crazy trip, lots of firsts for me. Super, super fun. Uh, weather couldn't have been better. And uh, yeah, man, really happy it happened. So on to more canoe trips. Super happy to start the canoe trip in season with a bang like this. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Oh, snap. Here comes the Calvary. There's a lot of yelling going in this car. The gear. My stuff's over there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a long time, right? Hi. I found this and me and Adam want to give it to oh, you. Oh, thank you. I have a lot. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I have a lot of gear to put in the car. Can you just hold on to it for a second? Oh. Can I get out? No, I want to load up. Want some food? Okay. Yes, I do. I do. Can I get out? I really wanted you to be in the water. Oh, Can I get out? I'm sorry, guys. It's my fault. I want What? I hear. Yeah, you can put it right in the back if you want. You got it? Team effort.